Hi folks, Dave here, AF5DN, and today I'm going to go over programming the HYS uh, dual band radio using the uh, free software. And we're going to be using a USB to serial adapter. Uh, these are readily available pretty inexpensively on eBay, no big deal there. Uh, and you will need to remove the, uh, the side plate here. I've already pre-taken the screw out. And just pop the little door open. And this plugs right in there. Okay. And this other end will go into the USB port of the computer. And uh, let me show you uh, the software. Okay, so the first step after installing the USB to serial port drivers, uh, after you plug the USB cable into the PC, uh, it will assign a COM port to the cable. And you need to determine what that COM port is. Now, the easiest way to do that is if you click on the icon here for safely remove hardware and eject media, single right click, and then open devices and printers and what you will see is a item called prolific USB to serial COM port and as you can see right here it is on COM port 3 and we can close that okay so the first thing we do is open the uh, the program and what you'll see by default when you open this up is this will be on COM port 1 down here at the bottom and we know our device is setting, currently sitting on COM port 3 so what we do is we hit communication COM port 3 we confirm COM port 3 now you'll notice down here at the bottom it has changed to COM port 3 and then you hit cancel to close the window uh, the next thing you want to do is hit the channel and this will give you the screen for doing the actual programming. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and read the data that is currently stored in the radio. And I'm going to click the read button there. And you'll see that it is uh, be bopping along there reading the data block. Okay, what I want to show you here real quick is during the, uh, the downloading and uploading of the radio, uh, you will get some indication of what's going on here with this little light. Let me click the read button real quick and you'll see that I get a red light during the reading process. So in other words the computer is reading the data off of the radio. Now you also see down here at the bottom where it says connect well with radio. That means you've got a good communication path through the USB to serial port. And the, uh, the download was pretty complete, and you can say you'll get this little uh, prompt here, that uh, the complete reading data from the transceiver, just hit OK on that. And you'll see some of the things that we've entered here. Now, the other video where I showed entering a repeater uh, from the keypad, you'll see we saved that into block 29, and like I explained in that video, entering from the keypad you cannot put a name on it so let me just put a, a name here real quick and I'm going to tab out and that'll be in there okay so let's start a uh, let's start one from the beginning let me go ahead and do a, 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 a UHF channel uh, what I've shown you before have been VHF channels uh, the first thing you have to start out with is the band and if you notice up here you have your VHF band it tells you what frequency ranges UHF frequency ranges UHF 1 and UHF 2 well, I'm going to be uh, programming a repeater here uh, that's in the Dallas area it's a 442.500 and as you can see 442 is going to fall right into this UHF 1 so that's the first thing we'll pick is UHF-1 and we simply type in the uh, the receive frequency 
442.50 and we click out now it automatically is going to fill in the transmit frequency the same as the, re the receive frequency and you do need to change this now this uh, is plus uh, so we're going to have to add uh, 5 megahertz to it or I'm going to make this a 7 447.50 and the uh, PL tone on this one is 110.09 very similar to all the other ones now as you see here here's all your PL tones okay and then you can get into the uh, the uh, DCS encoding when you get down in here further so I'm going to pick 110.09 now I'm going to leave my transmit power at high uh, by default, it's going to be wide bandwidth. I'm going to change that to narrow. I'm going to leave the push to talk ID off. Uh, this op signal, SP ultimate, these are for uh, if you're using DTMF tones. The busy lock will prevent you from transmitting if someone else is transmitting. That's sort of optional. Scan add. If you want to scan this channel, leave it on. If you don't want to scan the channel, just turn it off. That's easy enough. And then you can put in your own description. This one is WB5JBP. And when I click out, it's going to change that to uppercase for me. All right, so now I've programmed in this repeater. That's pretty simple. So if you had a list of many, many repeaters, you just go through here and type all this stuff in. And when you're done, let me show you. If you hit Save, it gives you the option to give it a file name. And I'll hit Confirm. Okay, complete storing channel parameters. Now I'm going to write this back to the radio. So I click on write. And it is now taking that new channel and writing it back into the transceiver. And let me do a write. And now that you're writing, you can see the uh, little light is uh, blinking green. And it will continue blinking as long as the, uh, the upload or putting the program into the radio is, is going on there. Okay, just want to show you that real quick. And when that's done, I'm going to show you a couple other options here. It's actually showing you which channels it's writing here. Alright, writing is complete. So now we've successfully programmed this new channel into our repeater, uh, into our transceiver. Now there's other options here. If you've noticed by going through the menu, there's other things that you can set. And these options, let me click that one. They give you access to preset many of the other radio functions. And you still have the read and write capability. Let me click read here, and it's going to show the defaults that are currently programmed into this radio. And you can see, uh, let me go through them here, your uh, uh, timeout, uh, transmit timeout, your squelch level, uh, your VLX is off, whether or not what your working mode is, uh, your working bands, channel mode, whether or not when you come up what, what you want to see in each of those channels by default. Okay, let's do channel and name. Okay, uh, here's some stuff for the DTMF tones. I'm not going to go into that right now. Keyboard lock and auto lock and beep. Those are uh, quite handy. If you want to change modes, I showed you in another uh, uh, video where I was changing the mode uh, using the uh, memory button, holding down the memory button when I turned it on, and this is where you would s set that password. And you can set up the default frequencies, your default uh, band frequencies, okay, your default transmit power, default uh, squelch settings, uh, default uh, bandwidth, your default steps, all of these things. Here's your, and you notice we're up in here in the UHF, and our step frequency is 5, and we're down here in the UHF and our step frequency is 0.6 
and you can also save this into a menu file and write it back to the radio. And that is pretty much it. Okay, so now you can see how easy it is to program one of these radios uh, with the, uh, the free software that's available for them. Now, the, the very handy thing about this is, um, as you can see, you can save memory files to your computer. So, let's say you typically work in an area around your home and on a daily basis you can program the radio for all of the repeaters that are close to you. But say you're going to take a trip off uh, out of state somewhere, you can look up those repeaters in that other state, in that other area that you're going to be traveling to, create a new file, update the radio, and then when you're at the location uh, that you're traveling to, you'll be pre-programmed for all your repeaters. And then simply when you get back to your normal location, you can reload your, your default program and everything's back the way it was. So the, the ability to save different programming files is, is going to be really handy for you. Okay, I hope you got something out of that. Uh, I'm Dave, AF5DN, and I appreciate you watching.